Hey guys, welcome to TRW Pizza. Welcome back. Thanks for all the support. Today we're going to be talking about launching pizzas and how to consistently get a good launch for your pizzas on the Unicoder 16. Now, it might look like a fairly easy process to do, but anyone who has been using these ovens or any other oven for that matter knows that it's very easy to actually make a beautiful dough, make a fantastic looking pizza on the peel, then you go to launch it and it doesn't quite go according to plan. It gets stuck on the pizza stone. The stone then burns the detritus left on the stone. And before you know it, you've got a bit of a mess. Now, in this video, I'm planning to show you some of the elements that affect the launch. I'm going to take you through some first-hand examples that I've filmed of myself making mistakes on the launch, which have turned out to be a bit of disaster. Some which have been okay and some which have turned out really well and I explained to you the different factors that have made those things happen. I think this is going to be pretty helpful because, as you know, I record virtually every pizza I make, and therefore I capture the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope you find this really helpful, guys. Um, please like and subscribe. It really helps to see your support and encourages me to, to keep going on this. I love making this content, and your support means a lot to me. So, on with the video. So here is... As I said before, a good example of a simple launch that went very smoothly. The pizza went in, the stone was about 430 degrees Celsius or 806 degrees Fahrenheit. And the pizza cooked very nicely. I never got it too close to the flame and you're about to see the end result now. Very happy cooking in about one minute and 30 seconds. I'm now going to show you some Im images which aren't quite so pretty and explain what happened and why. So this is the rather unflattering result of a badly launched pizza. Now, it isn't just about the launch. The launch goes wrong for a number of factors in my humble opinion. Here you can see me making the pizza that you've just seen burnt sat on that peel. Now, the first thing that you should notice and something that I've learned is the absolutely critical factor in making this decent pizza is not to have overproof dough. This dough is far too blown up, bubbly. It should be probably about three quarters of the size. It's a 275 gram dough ball. And I was making this about a month or two into first getting my uni. Let's say that was about seven months ago or so. At that point, I wasn't aware that I was putting too much yeast into my recipe. These days, if I make six dough balls of 275 grams, I actually put less than half a teaspoon of yeast, the Caputo Lieveso, Lieveto, sorry, active dry yeast, less than half a teaspoon. A lot of places will advise you to use more than that. I find that is not necessary, and I find that essentially you will end up blowing up your dough if you're not careful, and it's going to cause you all kinds of problems. Now, we'll move forward in this... Um, in this video and you'll see what those problems look like when it comes to setting up the pizza. So here you see I've taken the dough over to the semolina flour. Side note, I don't use semolina flour anymore. I use the Tipo 00 to land the dough in. Um, but the shape of the dough here is just is just poor. Um, it hasn't come out of a cylindrical container like the Uni stack, which really, really helps. Um, so I'm already struggling with a lopsided, uneven dough um, it's not very compliant. If I try and even it out and make it round, I'm going to make it thinner in certain parts. This is just, it's great that I've got this on camera because it shows my, and reminds me how far along I've come. But, um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a challenging pizza to, to make right from this point because the dough just wasn't great. Uh, I'm going to move forward a bit now and you'll see a bit more. So here you see, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to stretch it out. I'm trying to get a decent shape to it. It's, uh, it's not going well. I'm persevering, obviously, because I see this as an opportunity to learn. And uh, mistakes are the greatest way of learning. Um, but yeah, I am probably at this point thinking, right, how do I make the best of a bad situation here? It's getting to roughly the size that I'll be willing to transfer it over to the peel. And over it goes. So already you can see you can see another problem. It's too big. That peel 
should not have the pizza going right up to the edges and kind of overhanging. It's just basically, um, yes, it's moving fine at this point, but it's just looking like a bit of a mess. Shape, the uniformity, the depth, it's, it's basically doomed at this point, this pizza, I must say. On goes the sauce. And as you'll see now, to add insult to injury, I am kind of loading this pizza up with quite a lot of toppings. Another thing I've learned is don't overdo the toppings, especially if you think that the launch might be a bit challenging because, you know, the, the toppings essentially add mass um, effect with the kind of the pull of the pizza, bits move around and jiggle. And yeah, before you know it, you're going to have a bit of a challenge on your hands to get this thing cooked properly. I should have, if I was going to continue with this, I should have basically went for a very basic margarita and take it from there. But hey, I was learning at the time, and that's what it's all about. So at this point, I've got a rather busy pizza ready to go into the Unicoda 16 trying to make last minute refinements to the shape. Again, too big, hanging over the edges, but it is kind of moving. But yeah, you can see, you can see where this is gonna go wrong already. Okay, let's get pizza number one of the day started. Ready to go? Oh, I think so. Here we go. So you heard my great enth enthusiasm there. Um, I simply didn't have the experience at the time to know that this was going to be such a challenge. Uh, I mean, look at that. The back left of that pizza was obviously wet, stuck to the peel. When I pulled out the, the peel, it stretched back with it. I've now got a bit of a drama on my hands. It's actually even hanging over the stone and touching that metal strip before the, the stone itself. That in itself is going to cause some, some problems. Um, yeah, you'll see me tentatively try to adjust it with the turning peel. Of course, it isn't cooked as well at the front as it is at the back, so it's getting stuck to the turning peel. Meanwhile, the dough at the back, the pizza at the back, is getting very nicely charred by those flames. And... Uh, yeah, I can vaguely remember this particular pizza. And I remember just thinking, right, at this point, I just need to leave it there for a few seconds, let that dough get a little bit more um, of a cook, and then it'll be at a point where I can move it as quickly as possible and try and avert disaster, i.e. lots of um, pizza charring and burning left over on that stone, which is then going to go and ruin the next five pizzas I'm planning to make. Now you saw that moment there when the turning peel actually came through the pizza itself in the center because there was a thin area of that pizza. It cut through it. Now the toppings, of which there are too many, have leaked onto the turning peel and onto the stone. I mean this is a um, omni shambles. Um, pretty hard to watch myself do that these days because uh i'm 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 pretty proud to say this kind of thing hasn't happened for many months now but yeah look at that mess that i've that i've created on the stone obviously it's starting to to char itself and how am i then going to cook some more pizzas on this the new pizzas that go on even if i do them perfectly will get caught up in that sticky mess and they themselves will be um, affected in their in their in their cooking. So yeah, highly frustrating. Um, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to help you avoid with this video. And honestly, it doesn't take a lot to avoid it. You just have to go through the steps I'm going to be explaining to you. And from then on, you won't have to deal with this kind of nonsense. So there it is. Um bit of a sorry state it just it just got you know there's two things wrong here I think one is that I took too long to release it wasn't confident it got stuck a bit and stretched 
it was at the back and at the front long and thin because it was at the front it was hot enough and cooking but it was cooking at the back it was stuck to the the um, stone a bit and all in all it just made for a uh, a pizza I couldn't turn so you can see it got burnt there at the back and left but undercooked at the front um, yeah next one so interestingly you heard my commentary there at, at the time when I made that a few months ago and I was explaining that it was due to the the makeup of the pizza but I didn't really mention it was because of the dough because at the time I didn't really know it was because of the dough I was using too much yeast and I didn't know it now here's another pro problematic pizza launch this one looks pretty uh, pretty decent so far this is relatively recently this was only about uh, two months ago but what you notice there right now there's a there's a slight undulation in the center of that pizza it's rising and that to me shows that it's very light in the center i.e. it's very thin in the center it's very thin and that means that I've got to be extra delicate not to pierce the pizza with the turning peel essentially what I should have done is not stretched it so much in the center use more of the crust um, to add the add the size of the pizza but yes I've affected the, the integrity of that pizza already and now you'll see in the center you just notice that kind of splodge of red that is the tomato sauce coming up through because the turning peel has has pierced that pizza at the bottom and now we know that the toppings are starting to cook underneath by the way this is a completely different um, cook compared to the, the previous video this is this is months later which shows that even with much more experience things can go wrong I'm now noticing that this is stuck uh, and I'm thinking through the best way to avoid this turning into an unmitigated disaster see if I can just get it out completely cut my losses however it's really really not wanting to move that molten cheese and tomato is really starting to spread all over the, the stone and at this point I was lucky actually because this was my last pizza of the day I'd, I'd done six pizzas and this is the one where I basically was just, you know, making it for leftovers for tomorrow. Look at that cheese underneath. The toppings are completely gone through onto the, onto the stove. Again, really glad I, I caught this so I can show you guys so you can learn from my mistakes. The, the best way to learn from mistakes is learn from other people's mistakes so you don't, you don't have to make them. At this point, I decided, let's turn the uh, gas off. Let's let this cool down and deal with the mess afterwards, which I did. Uh, it was a interesting one but it was basically just a reminder here that when I am stretching out the pizza don't allow the center to get too thin because it becomes much easier to damage that pizza so you, you can see here the crust was much bigger unnecessarily so I should have pushed it out more from the edges rather than the center and that was the leftover from that issue done okay so here's pizza two same approach as last one. It's, I think it's getting stuck a bit in the middle here. Let's see if it launches well or not. You see, that was where it was stuck. So this pizza won't be as smooth to get in or out. So that was just an interesting one. I let my former self explain that intro. I was having a great day with the pizzas. Everything was going well. However, you would have seen as I launched it, I just got this sensation that it didn't quite jump off that peel like it uh, should have done, like the previous pizzas of the day had. And it wasn't jiggling quite as smoothly when I jiggled it. Parts of the pizza were moving backwards and forwards on the peel, but in the center, it was just, it was stuck solid. So I knew as I launched it, I would see a bit of dough on that peel. Now, when I brought the peel out, I was correct. You could see that. What that showed was I hadn't actually put enough flour on the dough as I took it out of the um, uh, out of the proofing box. So there was a bit of wet dough exposed to the peel and that's what sticks. So again, get your dough onto the TPO00, put it on there, turn it over a couple of times and that eliminates the wet dough, which sticks to the peel and causes problems with your launch. Very simple. 
Anyway, this wasn't a, a major drama, and you'll see shortly that the, um, you know, the pizza was fully recoverable, and I ended up delivering it fine. So the next part of this video is going to show the dough principles, how you make solid dough that doesn't present these kind of problems. Okay, guys, it's that magic time. The uni is on. It's been on for 22 minutes at full flame. I believe it's going to be at about 470 degrees about now, Celsius. And that means time to make the first pizza. I will shortly turn the uni down to low flame so that the temperature comes to the right level to make my pizza, which is about 430 degrees Celsius. Let's get the first dough out of the uni stack. I have put some Tipo 00 flour down here just to land it to make sure that any of the wetness on this dough is kind of absorbed by that flour and that will mean I will have less chance of issues when I launch the pizza from the peel because in my opinion wetness of pizza on the peel equals challenges. You can see got some big bubbles forming now. This has been um, sat at room temperature for over an hour, maybe an hour and a half now. So obviously at that point, <clears throat> the dough starts to react more with that warmth. The warmth means more reaction with the yeast and that's when it grows even more. So I've done my mise en place, everything in place. I've got my cruettes, I've got some garlic chili olive oil, I've got my tomato, freshly grated parmesan, some um, dried mozzarella, some buffalo mozzarella, some mixture of homegrown small basil and uh, some shop bought bigger basil. Plus I'm gonna make some salami pizzas, so there's some salami there and uh, everything is in place. So let's get this down onto the landing pad. You see I've used this scraper to get the edges of the dough just lifted from the side of the uni stack and it's just coming down under its own time now under gravity naturally I don't need to do anything else really it's going to land nice and round Normally takes between about 10 and 30 seconds. One of the benefits of the uni sack, in my opinion, is that obviously this round, nice shape means that the dough comes out in this part of the process in the appropriate shape to make a round pizza. A lot of the time, pizza dough comes out square depending on where it's been, like these these down here and that means you need to then mold it which isn't a problem but it's an extra thing to do so that's come out nicely and I'm going to just so I don't forget put a little bit of zero zero flour here I'll turn this over I will do my best to get that flour covering any of the very wet bits of the pizza here what I don't want to do though is have the dough absolutely caked in flour. So you'll see as I go through this process, there's too much flour on at the start and then gradually that will come less and less. Obviously the flour will remain stuck to the wettest bit so it works very nicely. These bubbles like this, I do tend to just burst them while I go along with this process simply because the bubbles are the bits that are likely to, well will, jump up first in that hot uni and basically have the propensity to burn quicker. So now I'm just pushing gently from the inside out to the sides of the pizza to get the crust nice and loaded with that air. Remember this, this dough has been 
It's about 25 hours old now. When I say that, I mean that as the 25 hours ago was when I introduced the flour, the water, the yeast, and the salt. Now for this one, what I'm going to do, because I'm showing this uh, approach as a way to make kind of a simple, simple pizza. When I say simple, it's actually the one I, the approach I use myself. So it's not like it's the easy way, it's just the way that I find is the simplest and I use myself virtually every time at the moment. Look, the pizza's staying nice and round. I'm going to just put it on the back of my hands a couple of times. And I'm going to put it on the peel now, the launch peel. So the reason why I've done that is because I think a lot of people have challenges moving the pizza from the surface to the peel when it's ready to, when it's got the toppings on already. So my attitude is, there's nothing wrong with getting on the peel without the toppings on, and then making your life easier, put the toppings on at that point. Look, it's moving very nicely. This is gonna be a very easy pizza to launch. It's not gonna get stuck. If I had any sticking, you wouldn't see all of it moving. You'd see maybe bits of it moving, but it may be stuck in the middle. Not the case here. This is in good shape. I'm happy. I can see a lot of activity in the crust. And I'm gonna go and come and show you up close. Hopefully you can see that. Lots of beautiful activity in the crust. I'll bring the light here so you see it a little bit more, a little bit better. Maybe not. There's a nice relief, like the surface of the moon almost. Good. So I'm very confident this pizza is going to turn out well, simply because it's moving so nicely here. People talk about getting it as soon as possible onto the onto the oven once you've got it kind of stretched. I think that's a fair thing to say. However, it's not the end of the world if the pizza's not sticking um, to the to the peel. I don't think you have to rush too much. Oh, that's annoying. Got some tomato in my flour. I'm gonna have to fix that prior to the next pizza. Parmesan. Mozzarella. This is um, pre-shredded from the shop simply because I couldn't get the dry block today. Not the end of the world. Put a little bit too much on there, but that's fine. Then I'm gonna go a little bit of the DOP fresh buffalo mozzarella as well. One, two, three. My daughter's about to come through the door, so her favorite is the margarita. This will be hers. Put some of the small, powerful, homegrown basil on there. Try and put it on in an aesthetically pleasing manner. Don't throw it on without any uh, thought. Then touch of the oil from the cruet. Not too much. Okay, this piece is basically ready to cook. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stretch. Just get it to the right size. It doesn't actually need that much of a stretch, but just help get, get the shape, make sure it's still moving nicely, which it is. Let me show you up, up close again. There you go, a little bit of light on the subject. There you go, and now I'm gonna take the camera outside and film it what being uh, cooked. Let's do that now. And now, a different pizza, but from the same batch that you just watched me making. Um, I'm showing you a nice smooth launch with the principles that I've just taught you. Made sure there's no wet dough touching the peel. Made sure the toppings aren't too heavy and make sure the integrity of that dough is spot on in it goes and you'll see really really great results
quite, this one's quite, I'm going to put this at the back, it's quite low temperature, just as an experiment. Not the smoothest launch, but it went in there and it's around. And in goes that margarita that you saw me previously put together on the table. It came off the peel very nicely. Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to do a bit more of a shuffle as it goes in. But again, I wanted to show you a good example of a launch based on having solid dough and no wet dough touching that peel. So I hope you found this useful, guys. It's, um, it's a subject which was really important for me to understand as I was learning how to make pizza, particularly on, you know, these, the uni, uni oven. Um, so I just thought I'd save you the hassle and teach you the learning points that I've had to go through personally. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this. There's going to be a lot more content coming from where this uh, comes from. And yeah, I'm just really, really appreciative of your comments and support. So please drop some comments. Let me know if you've got any questions you want me to cover. And we will uh, be speaking again very soon, I'm sure. Take care. Great. And here we go. Another superb looking pizza.